Hey guys, welcome to the Monday video. I hope everyone's having a good start to their week. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe down below. Monday is always our discussion-based video. If you tuned in for episode five of the Building the Four-Eyed Fox Body that we dropped yesterday, you know that we have everything done except for pulling the motor out. That adapter plate did not work, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I save all this crap, you guys brackets and old bolts and stuff like that and sometimes it comes in handy so i got a sheet of steel at the house i'm going to weld up a base plate for this we're going to drill our holes off of the carburetor holes and then we're going to mount this and see if we can get that motor pulled out of there so stay tuned for that but today we're talking another tool today we are going to talk about the m12 hacksaw from milwaukee All right, you guys, so when it comes to the Hacksaw, which is just a reciprocating saw, Milwaukee actually has four different options. You have the M12 base model, which is this one here, non-fuel brushed motor. This goes for about 68 bucks bare tool, I believe. They have a fuel version of this, and they also have an 18 volt line with fuel and non-fuel as well. So there's four different Hacksaws you can buy. So this, out of all four, is gonna be the least powerful. I picked this one up used, it was brand new, never been used, for $50 bare tool, so I couldn't pass it up. The thing that I like about the M12 tools, especially as a technician, is they're a little bit smaller, so you can fit them in a lot tighter spaces, stuff like that, and this being the non-fuel, it's even a little bit smaller. The fuel I haven't used endlessly, like I've used this at work and just on little projects around my house and in the garage, but I did notice that it's quite a bit bulkier, so that's one thing I like about this. One thing I did notice about the Hacksaw is that these batteries, if you have just the standard 2.0 batteries in there, they do, it does rip through batteries pretty quick. Even with the four amp hour, you run through your batteries pretty quickly, so a six amp hour would probably be a good investment for this tool. It's not super powerful, but the thing I like this for is, one good example would be end links. Sway bar end links all the time get cut, and then instead of trying to fit the big corded bulky saw that we have in the shop, I'll just use this instead. It takes a tiny bit longer, but honestly, like I've said before with most of these reciprocating saws, hack saws, stuff like that, if you have quality blades, it works out really well. Now I don't have one with me, but one thing that also works well with this is you're not supposed to do it, but you can put the little air saw blades in there that come on the pneumatic auto body saws. You can actually fit those in there. So this chuck right here just turns and the blades pop in and out just like that. So that is one thing I like, easy storage, buy quality blades, you're gonna have a better experience. And then it's just this easy to put it in. You just twist, drop it in there, blade's good to go. Pull the trigger, has a battery indicator on it, just like most of the Milwaukee tools. And like I said, it's primarily a convenience thing for me, you guys. It doesn't have to be the most powerful tool in the world because I like the sheer convenience of it. Yes, you run through batteries. Yes, you can get a more powerful saw than this, but the amount of spaces that you can fit this in is awesome. I've cut soft metals with great ease, like aluminum and copper and stuff like that. I've also cut steel with this, a couple steel plates, steel tubing. Takes a little bit longer. You work through some of your saw blades, but it will do the job. I've cut lots of wood. Um, I have blades that'll cut nails and wood, stuff like that. You just want to make sure you have quality blades and have the right blade for the job. Like I said, the biggest thing I've used this for in the shop is sway bar end links. It worked great for that. When they break and get stuck and you can't get them off of there, this is a great tool. One of the reasons you guys too that I really like Milwaukee is once you start collecting batteries for these kind of tools, it's easier just to stick with one brand. And Milwaukee literally seems to have everything. I really like Bosch a lot as well. They just don't have the variety of tools. Milwaukee, it seems like anything you can think of, you can buy a tool for it. Will I upgrade this to a fuel? Mm, you know, probably not, not the M12. Like I said, it's a little bit bulkier, and for the power difference that I noticed, I think that I'd rather stick to this one and have the advantage of having a little bit smaller tool. One thing I would like to buy is the M18 fuel because if you're gonna get it, if it's gonna be bigger, it should be quite a bit more powerful. And that way, I kinda, it doesn't defeat the purpose of getting one that's bulkier and has a, roughly the same power, at least by feel. I would absolutely recommend this tool if you're looking to get, if you're looking for a small reciprocating saw, I've tried the air saws, they seem to bog down pretty quick. Granted, they're a little smaller than this, but like I said, this one, this chuck, I don't think, you're not, you're definitely not supposed to do it, but the air saw blades, the little tiny guys, actually will fit in here as well. And I've done that when I've been in a pinch. So again, another great tool from Milwaukee, guys. I hope this helps you make a somewhat informed decision, you guys. And as always, subscribe down below, drop me a comment, let me know if you like the video. Your support is greatly appreciated. Shift Wrench Repeat uploads every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.